School days, school days, time for back to school days. Homework and parents and conferences too. I have ideas just for you. Families have so much to share. When we show how much we care, we all want children to succeed. I hope I have something you need. Thank you for joining me today. I have lots of ideas to help you make some better connections with your families. There is so much research that shows the more families are involved, the better the children do academically. There is decreased drug and alcohol. There is better attendance and um, there's better teacher morale. All of these positive things happen when we get the families a little bit more involved. And I wanted to, um, to highlight this book. It came out a couple of years ago, The Smartest Kids in the World by Rem Amanda Ripley. And one of the things she found was that what parents did at home mattered significantly. Reading to children and talking about school was very important. Parents showed their children that they valued education by asking about school, what they learned, and what they liked. So that's what this video is about today. It's just lots of different ideas that you can integrate to help engage your families a little bit more. And um, a long time ago at a workshop, a teacher said, you know what, mama bears are mama bears regardless of IQ or socioeconomic status. And I think that's true about families and parents in general. It doesn't matter where they live or how much money they make or their education level. Everybody cares about their child. Everybody. And so our job is to be as accepting and positive as we can be. Now, I've got ideas today. Some of them are going to work better with preschool children. Some of them are going to be better with primary grade children. So like any of my workshops, you just pick and choose and do which ones work best for you. Now, I wanted to get started. Um, we know how important it is to get parents to read with the children at home. And I think, I know many of you do this, but I just wanted to make you aware that on my website and all the things I'm sharing with you are free. You can download these monthly reading act, uh, calendars and you would send this home at the beginning of each month. And it says, color one pumpkin, like for October, color one pumpkin for each five to 10 minutes of reading, return the completed sheet by the end of the month. So this is gonna encourage parents to read with their children. Um, save these when you have your parent conference. You can pull these out and say, oh, let's see how this is doing and get their feedback. And if they don't have any in the folder to talk about, you can say, oh, please send these in and kind of remind them, give them a gentle nudge to be doing this at home. Um, I also have these free activity calendars. Um, some parents want homework, some of them don't. But this activity calendar, and you can download these each month um, and ask the parents to do five or ten and return it by the end of the month and these are just simple things that reinforce what you're doing at school but a lot of your parents don't have early childhood degrees they don't know that when they're driving down the road that they can look for geometric shapes or they don't know to say a nursery rhyme with their children or to have their child say please and thank you all day so it's just some you know gentle way to help the parents do at home what we are trying to do with the children at school I also wanted to let you know on my website this month um, I have for each month, you will find activities that you can send home. You can put these on your website or um, however you want to distribute them, but there's a song, there's a nursery rhyme, there's a finger play, there's a cooking activity, there's an outdoor thing, there's a game to play. Um, different things that parents can do at home with their children. And um, so these are things you might wanna do them in your classroom and then you send this home and it's a good way for parents to um, review some of these activities at home. Now, I also um, wanted to share a little idea about conversation starters. Now, this would be better, obviously, with preschool or pre-K children um, because so many times they go home and mom and dad say, what'd you do today? And they say nothing or we played. So these are little conversation starters and you can download these free off my, my blog. Um, and you cut these apart and put them in a bag and each day the children draw one and then they hand it to their parents when they leave and that says something like, ask me about the art project or ask me who I played with or 
ask me about today's book or ask me what I like best. So it gives the parents specific things to talk to their children about. I also like what one school did. They had a sign up when the parents picked out their children that said noise is off. And so, you know, if the parents don't have their cell phone on when they pick their children up, if they don't put a video on for them, if it's just quiet, their children are gonna talk to them about school. And a, a lot of parents don't have you know, grandparents like me that say, turn it off, turn it off. And so we have to be the ones to, to tell them, you know, that make it a quiet time. And if it's just quiet, you're going to be surprised how much your child's going to talk to you. Now, I love these little brain tickets. Um, if you've been to my workshops, I always share these. You can download these or you can just buy rolls of tickets and, you know, the uh, coupons you kind of give away at uh, door prices and raffles. But um, tell the parents, Every day at the end of the day, I'm gonna ask your child what they learned and they get a brain ticket when they can tell me what they learned. And your job, parents, is to ask your child what he or she learned to earn the brain ticket. So it gives them something specific to talk about. And when you first start doing some of these things with the children, you know, at the end of the day, she tell me what you learned today. <laughs> It takes a while. It takes a while to build some of these routines. And so um, be patient with them. And you know, maybe what did you like best today? And, and set them up for success. And, and then after a while, you're gonna be surprised that they will recall information and they'll be able to take it home and share with their parents. Um, many times the finger plays and nursery rhymes that we do at school get all muddled up by the time the children get home. So, you know, I think it's fun if you can do videos and post the videos of the children doing some of the finger plays and songs with the children. Um, I also like the idea one teacher said that each week she worked on a nursery rhyme and at the end of the week she sent the nursery rhyme home with the children so the parents could do it and they had other little activities that they did to reinforce the rhyme. Um, Another idea, this was at uh, a school in Atlanta. They did uh, a journal at the end of each day, what I did today, and the children drew a picture and wrote what they did. So see, this would work better with your primary grade children and a really good way to help them recall because we do stuff all day long. And when we have them just at the end of the day, just take a few minutes and kind of think about what they've learned. It just kind of seals it in the brain and helps them make those connections and those concepts. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about homework. Some parents like homework, some of them don't like homework. Um, most of the research that they've done with younger children and elementary children, um, most of the research have shown if homework really doesn't do a whole lot of good academically. But what happens when we do homework consistently, it builds in that sense of responsibility and it builds in that routine. So. I'm not talking about paper, pencil, homework, or more worksheets, or that kind of stuff, but just some way for the parents to interact with their children. Now, I like this idea, the tic-tac-toe homework. So each week, you would make a tic-tac-toe frame, and you would put um, different things that the children can do with their parents. So they can do three things and get tic-tac-toe, and that's perfectly fine. Or if they're the type of child that likes homework and the parent that likes homework, they can fill in the whole page. So it gives them a choice. And these are just things like, you know, read a book, um, take a walk, play a board game, look for shapes in your house, just real simple things that parents can do with their children. Um, also like these book bags. I know you can buy these commercially, but this is an easy thing to do. Just get a little bag and um, you can put the book in there and of course a little stuffed animal or puppet if you have one is always fun but i liked this little routine not um these are some good ways to build in fluency um so when they take on the book back number one read the book to yourself number two read the book to your book buddy number three read the book in the mirror, and you know kids love to look in the mirror. Number four, read the book to someone in your family, and that could be your dog or your brother or sister or mom or dad or anybody. Number five, read the book one more time to your pet, a toy, or something else, and then draw a picture of your favorite part of the story. So just a really good way to practice reading at home and um, have a good time. Now. As a parent, 
we all want to hear something positive about our child. Nothing is sweeter to our ears than for somebody to say something nice about our children. And so um, one thing that you can do, a pat on the back, and you can either, you know, let the children do their handprint and then let it dry and write on the back, or you can just trace around their hand and cut it out. And then just write just one little positive thing like Jackson, good job singing, and then tape it to their back and they go home with a pat on their back. Parent conferences are a great way to uh, talk to parents about things that their children are doing well. And um, I like this idea someone shared me. Uh, they said that um, they do a T-chart and things the child wants to cheer about, they put on one side, and things that the child has that are goals, they put on the other side. So this would be good if you were doing a student-led conference where the children and the parents and the teacher all meet together. This would obviously better be better for your primary grade children. This is one I used in my kindergarten, and I used to dread parent conferences until somebody shared this idea with me. Because so many times when they came to the parent conference, they didn't want to talk about their child. They wanted to talk about their job or their neighbor's dog or something like. So before conference time, um, I would send this home and I would tell the kids, would you like me to give your parents homework? And they go, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, here's um, a, a questionnaire for your parents to fill out and they can bring it to the conference next week. Um, and then... If the parents showed up and they didn't have this, I would just give them the form again and smile and say, well, I'll just give you a few minutes to fill this out and then we'll talk about it because this is your conference, okay? So it starts off, um, uh, your child's, my child's favorite activity at school is. So they're gonna have to talk to their kid, what's your favorite thing at school? And we'll talk about that. My child expresses concern about. Well, maybe their child is getting upset on the bus on the way home and you have no idea about that. Sometimes children have concerns and we're not even aware of it. So parents need to express that to us so we can work on that. Um, my child's strong qualities are. So they say something positive about your child and you can reinforce that. Yes, I've noticed that. That's so good. Um, but the one I really like is areas I feel my child needs to work on are. Now, far better that the parent says, my, ch my child needs to work on writing than for you to say, well, your child needs to work on writing. Whatever they say, use that as a springboard and say, you are such a perceptive parent. That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Let's see what we can do about that. And so it's a partnership. It's not like your child's bad or your child's wrong, but let's see, what can we what can we do together? This is what I can do. What can you do to help with this situation? And then um, something my child would like to do at school. Maybe their child goes home and said, I never get to be line leader. And you say, well, actually, you know what? We do line leader in alphabetical order. And um, George, is, uh, was, George was line leader, uh, let's see. Oh, on September 9th. Yep, he already had a turn. And he'll get another turn soon. Um, Something I would like to see my child do at school is, and they're all going to say read or whatever, and say, well, you know what? We are learning to read every day. Every time we sing a song, every time we say a nursery rhyme, every time the children listen to a book, every time you read to them at home, they are learning to read and getting ready to read. So um, you can reinforce them that way. Um, some activities to um, involve parents. I love this idea, um, the brown bag special. So some of your parents work and can't not volunteer in the room. Um, and so what you do is you get a brown paper grocery bag and you write brown bag special on it. And you have the parents sign up. And on my blog this week, I have a list of an inventory of, of different ways that parents can get involved in the classroom. Um, and so if, you know, maybe a child's parents work and um, they volunteer for the brown bag special, uh, maybe you need 20 pumpkins cut out. So you send home the orange paper and the pattern for the pumpkin and the child gets to take home the brown bag special. Now, that would be good for a child whose parents doesn't have a lot of resources. If you have a parent with a lot of resources, you might send home something home in the brown bag special. Please go to Dr. Jean's website and download all of her ideas for me and they can use 3,000 sheets of paper and do that. So, I'm just kidding. You can adapt this to the parent's abilities. But, you know, even if you have, you know, a cut or a cricket to cut out the pumpkins, sometimes just to give the parents, you know, the opportunity to cut out some pumpkins 
do something for you is a positive thing to do. Um, sometimes parents like to get involved in projects. Like um, I love what one teacher said. They did um, a homeschool alphabet book, and she sent home a letter with each child on a piece of paper, and they got to decorate the page with environmental print, and they drew pictures, and they cut out magazine pictures for that letter, and you put them together. You have a great alphabet book. And, of course, any child's going to want to read a book that they help make with their parents. Um, another one could be a number book, and you send home, a different page with each child with a number on it. Um, for the older kids, I love this one. Um, believe it or not, I was once a first grader. And so um, you ask each parent to draw a picture about what they remember and write about what they remember about being in first grade or second grade or third grade or whatever. It's a good springboard to get the parents to remember what it was like to be a child and to talk to their child. Um, just a few other ideas. Um, the Proud Parent Book. And you can do this with a spiral notebook or pocket folder, anything you want. And you send this home with one child each day. And you ask the parents to write a description of their child, maybe put a picture, and, you know, things their child likes, um, favorite pets, um, books, songs, whatever. And then one child takes this home every day, and they bring it back to school the next day. And at your morning meeting, you read this like, <clears throat> and, and it's good if the teacher models it the first time. I wrote one for my son, Grant, K, K, grandson KJ um, several years ago. This is my grandson KJ. He is six years old and lives in Arlington, Virginia. KJ loves to play games and read. His hair is brown and his eyes are gray. KJ likes ice cream, we, and playing outside with his friends. KJ makes us smile and he's kind to others. I'm so proud of him. And so you model what to do and then each day a parent gets to write a kind thought about their child. And it'll be interesting to see how parents can read what other parents have said and then look at their child in a very positive light. Um, just a, a few other quick ideas because I know it's about time for me to stop. Um, sometimes you wonder if notes are going to get home or not for parents or if parents read the things that you send them. Um, I love this class stationery teacher shared with me. She let all the kids draw their picture and then reduce the size and put it around and that was what she used to send notes home to parents or um, you could even fold the paper this way and you've got some great little notes. These would also be fun for the children to use in the writing center. Um, one t t time a teacher said she got a Pringles can and wrote special delivery on it and when she had an important note to go home she put it in here and told the child you have a secret mission you get to take this home and make sure your parents open it and see what's inside and so you know make it like a special mission so that they can do it and then um, I was at one school and when they had a special note that needed to go home, they wrote it on a strip of paper and stapled it to the child's book bag. And that way it was very obvious for the parents to see what they were doing. Well, I hope you've gotten at least one or two new ideas of things that you can do in your classroom with your children to encourage this family relationship. And I have to be real careful not to talk about mothers and fathers, but to talk about families and, and how all families are different. And, and how are all families alike because we love each other and we care about each other. And I care about you, and I hope you have a school good, good year. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. It is time to say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. It is time to say goodbye to all my friends. Go to drjeanandfriends.blogspot.com for more ideas or go to my website, drjean.org. Take care. God bless. Thanks for joining me.